don't we don't march and protest because we like to march and protest. All we want to do is be free. Sean King from New York. Good morning, Sean King. Good morning. Yeah, good to talk to you all. You know, one of the questions I get, and I get asked this question when I travel all the time. I literally just got asked it yesterday on the street here in New York. Somebody asked me, they said, Sean, is the world truly worse? Is police brutality worse? Are hate crimes worse? Are mass shootings worse? Or does social media just give us more information? Is it just coming at us from every angle and we think it's worse? And my answer to that is always that it's both. Police brutality and mass incarceration are the worst they've ever been. Hate crimes are the highest level they've ever been measured. Last year had the most school shootings ever measured. Last year was the deadliest year for gun violence ever measured. So we're not imagining any of that. It's math. It feels worse because it is worse. That's a fact. It feels so hard because we are living in a truly problematic, dangerous, hateful era. But social media absolutely allows us to be hyper-informed of every problem, every moment, every murder, every incident, every single day. Things are actually literally worse than they've ever been in our lifetime. And social media makes us all aware of it. And in a way, because of social media, it makes it hard for us to focus. So you're not imagining any of these problems. They're real. Social media just makes it very, very real all the time. I think we're experiencing something new, something more disturbing than I ever could have imagined. Donald Trump, a man without a single day of government experience, a man whose businesses have literally gone bankrupt six different times, a man who was forced to pay a $25 million fraud settlement to students of a fake university he created just days before he was elected, a man who called for the Central Park Five to be executed, a man cited by the federal government all the way back in 1971 for race-based housing discrimination, a man with 15 women accusing him of sexual assault and harassment, a man whose political claim to fame was literally saying that President Barack Obama was actually illegitimate because he wasn't even born in this country, a man who literally started his campaign for president by calling Mexicans rapists and criminals, a man who three months later said he wanted to ban all Muslims from entering the United States a man that was recorded openly bragging about sexually assaulting women is the president of the United States. A man that is widely beloved and celebrated by both current and former grand wizards of the KKK is president of the United States. A man beloved by neo-Nazis and white supremacists, not just in the United States, but all around the world is president. The president of the United States just last month said he wanted four congresswomen of color to go back to the countries they came from. That's new. A man who basked in the glory of a 13-second chant just two weeks ago of thousands of his supporters saying, send her back, send her back to Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. That man is president. That man and all of his hate and all of his words directly inspired the slaughter of 22 people in El Paso, Texas. We learned this week that the Trump campaign literally flooded Facebook with 2,200 different ads saying that Mexicans and other immigrants were invading the United States. And guess what? That's the very thing the white supremacists in Texas said inspired him to drive that long drive from Allen, Texas, all the way to El Paso. The man literally said he was there to stop the invasion. On Monday, the man that we called the MAGA bomber, Caesar Syoc, was sentenced to 20 years in prison for mailing bombs to Democrats all over the country. And his attorneys, and I I heard them say this, and they were honest. They literally said that Caesar Syoc did that because he took Trump's words literally when he called those very Democrats the enemies of this nation. Trump is getting people killed. And the net effect of this is that it can be hard to stay focused enough on one issue focused enough to organize on that issue and sustain your organizing until you see change because we're getting hit up with information from so many different angles. And it's hard to organize for real change 
because while you're organizing on one catastrophic issue, another disaster strikes and another, then another and another. But I need you and I want all of us to focus in on something. And I said this on Tuesday, when we say we need to fight like our lives depend on it, it's because they actually do. And I don't want us to lose focus. Our lives literally depend on us focusing, hunkering down, and organizing like we've never organized before. And I'm telling you, listen, we can all fight to defeat Trump and kick him out of the Oval Office. And I believe we can do that. We're a long way from doing that. But I, I want to ask us one more time to focus on a place where we can not only hold him accountable, but focus on a place where we need to control for us to get anything of substance done. On this coming Monday, and this will be the last time I'll talk to you until this happens, we're launching HowWeFlipTheSenate.com. It's going to be the biggest, most ambitious project I've ever worked on in my life. And I hope that it'll be the biggest, most organized, most ambitious project that you've ever worked on in your life, because we're going to run campaigns in at least 22 different states. On, on Monday, we're announcing the first eight candidates that we're endorsing. If you haven't signed up, you can sign up now at HowWeFlipTheSenate.com. So we're going to organize deeply, and we need everybody on board. And I want you to know something. What we're about to do there, we're already doing all over the country. And here's some good news. On Tuesday night in Jackson, Mississippi, a brilliant, gifted, compassionate leader, a young man named Jody Owens, with the help of the organization I co-founded, Real Justice, was just elected to be the brand new district attorney there. Right. And Jody is going to change the justice system from the inside out there in Hines County. And in the entire history of the state of Mississippi, they've never had a man like Jody Owens as DA. And many of the same people who helped run his campaign are going to be on board to flip the Senate with us. And so far in re with Real Justice, the organization that I helped run, we've not won nine different campaigns for district attorney all over the country. We just won deep in Mississippi. We've won in St. Louis. We've won all over Virginia. We won in California and Boston and Philadelphia. We've won deep in Texas. So the things that we've done before, we're about to use that same energy and effort to flip the Senate. It's going to take us 15 months to do it. But I know that when we come together to organize, we know how to win. It's just going to take all hands being on deck. Take care, y'all. Mm. Yeah, like our lives depend on it. And our lives yeah, do man. depend they on do. it. They really, they really, really, really do. And we need to be fired up. Because yeah, our lives, absolutely. yeah, it seems like every time he does something crazy, it just galvanizes his base. They well, are fired up. We've got yeah, to, we've got it. to get more fired but up. But not only do now. we have to get fired up, you guys, but we have to remember because we yeah. get past these, and then you say, well, you know, it, it never again is what the Jews always said, mm -hmm. and and we say that too. But then we don't follow up on it. Yeah, I think social media is a part of that, Sybil. I, as much as I love it and as much as I use it, I think it is the constant bombardment of the information mm. that causes us to lose focus. That's why we decided to go ahead and start this campaign now, to go ahead and put our eyes 15 months ahead of time so we can organize not a few weeks before Election Day. We can start right now and organize for 15 straight months to flip the Senate and even then, I think if we do it, we'll barely make it. It's going to be that hard. Wow. All right. We Senate. can do it. Yeah. All right. Take care, y'all. Good work. Okay. Thank you, Sean. All right.